Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do a first impression video of Those Not So Sweet Boys by Yoko Nogiri. Uh, this is, <clears throat> says right on the, uh, on the cover, creator of uh, That Wolf Boy Is Mine, which I have not read, uh, but I do own and have read Love and Focus, which I really loved. It was a three volume series about a uh, photography sort of boarding house situation. Love Triangle. Super great, loved it, loved the artwork, and so when this came out, and I was like, oh, yeah, no, this is going to be right up my alley. <laughs> um, I was very excited, and I ordered, I finished, I read this yesterday as of filming this, and ordered volume two immediately after I finished it, because I went, well, I definitely need more of this in my life, so, yeah. Uh, we follow her main character here, Midori. She is first year in high school. It's her first day. She loses her wallet. Um, she finds it in the hands of these boys who are like stealing from it right in front of her. And she's like, oh no, how am I going to get it back from these thugs? And then lo and behold, these three boys show up and this guy um, goes up and goes, yeah, that's my wallet. Give it back. And gets it back and then goes, this is yours, right? And hands it to her. So she's like, oh my God, this, my first day of school and I've already met this beautiful boy who was so nice and friendly and got my wallet back. Lo and behold, all three of them are in her, her class. She's so excited. Oh, we're going to be friends. It's going to be great. Um, and then all of a sudden, the three of them aren't at school and they aren't at school for like weeks. Um, and so she's very confused. She's like, what happened? All these rumors are flying around that they've got suspended. They beat up a teacher. They were smoking. They were doing all these things. And um, so everybody in her class is like, yeah, no, they're, they're trouble. They're, you know, whatever. And Midori is in a very classic, classic heroine situation where her father has left the uh, family um, with massive amounts of debt. And he's run away, and so she has a part-time job to help support support her um, brother who is in middle school and her mother who works many jobs herself. And their school, they're not allowed to have jobs. Her principal or her chairman of the school finds out and is like, look, I'm not going to punish you if you can get these boys to come back to school. Um, then I will, I will give you permission to have a job um, to help support your family. And so she's like, all right, cool, excellent. Let me do that. And turns out all three of them are writ from rich families. They are not at all interested in coming back. And uh, yeah, they just kind of hang out in his apartment all day because he lives alone and play video games and eat and do whatever. And so she's having a bit of a difficult time getting through to them. Um, not only for her own kind of like reasons of if they come back I can still keep my job but also she's like she's like I know you're not bad people you got my wallet back for me how do I you know prove to everybody else that you're not bad how do I get you into a comfortable situation when you show up to school and I really love this honestly I think this is refreshing and while it has a lot of those tropes of like oh it's a beautiful group of boys who are unattainable and you know the girl has massive amounts of debt and she's poor and like whatever um those tropes are there, but I will say, I think it is such a refreshing difference that these three boys who are not dumb, like they're not stupid. They're not, you know, skipping school because they're not good at it. They have a reason why they don't want to go back and why they feel like they're being judged there. Um, they have a fail safe of probably inheriting all of their parents' companies one day. And so they really don't need to try that hard. Um, they all have a lot of money and, but, you know, you usually see those types of characters with a lot of money, like, I don't know, they're just like, they're not skipping school all the time and they're not like trying to get actively get out of doing anything. I don't know. I just feel like the, the like princely characters are always seen as like overachievers and maybe if they're ditzy and dumb and they're not necessarily like super good at school, but they're still involved socially with school. Whereas these three are just total loners. Like they, they just hang out with each other. They have no interest in interacting with anybody else, not out of a, out of a like, 
high and mighty sort of attitude of I'm better than you, but just like a just not interested. The three of us are fine together. We don't need anybody else interfering in our business. Um, I just find their their personalities to be very interesting and very like refreshing. Um, yeah. And I don't know what it is because they're not like, this is not a new concept, but I just found them to be very fun. Um, and yeah, and she's so cute. She's very cute. Uh, Midori is the kind of typical upbeat heroine of like, well, we'll all be friends. We're all going to get together. We're going to have the best high school life ever is, you know, her, her kind of thing. But She's just cute. I really like her a lot, and I think that she's a good complement to these these three. Um, we meet mostly these two in this volume. This guy is a bit more on the fringe, and I'm assuming, based on how this volume ended, that volume two is going to get a little bit more into him and probably his relationship with these two. Um, yeah. I just love it. I knew I was going to love it. There was no way I was not going to enjoy this. Um, but got a nice color page at the beginning. Um, oh, yes. Here's there. So Chihiro um, Ichijo is the darker haired guy. And um, uh, Yuki Nojo is the longer haired boy. Um, Chihiro Goshima is definitely my favorite, and I knew he would be based on just his character design. I'm like, this is the guy. Um, that is going to be my favorite character, and I know that for a fact. And this facial expression, I just knew it. Um, so, yeah, anyway, this is great. If you have read or started this series, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, no spoilers, please. I'm just super stoked for another shoujo series that I'm excited about. Um, you know, with like Waiting for Spring ending last year and um, uh, Shortcake Cake ended as well. Like I'm just looking for something new and exciting because there have been quite a few shoujo series that have come out that I started and just went like, not super interested in this. And I know that I love high school romance. Like there's always a special place in my heart for this, these kind of series. But, you know, I've got all the classics that I really, really love. Uh, and so it's a bit more difficult now. I've read so much of these types of stories. It's difficult to find one that just kind of like breaks through for me. Uh, so I'm very, very excited for this one. And I cannot wait to read more. If you have any other recommendations of newer kind of shoujo series that are coming out that you want to recommend, um, I'd love to hear it because I really am not picking up as much as I would like to. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.